Well, hello there. And how is everybody doing today? <laughs> well, of course you are. <laughs> I'm so delighted that you are as well. And me, you ask? Oh, I'm just dandy. Because Flight One is now ready to go into the simulator room. Processor. Graphic cards, power supply, motherboard, memory, chips, everything, all in there. And I've been spending the last day and a half doing all the programming, installing Windows 10, all the endless updates, all the drivers and everything else. And then I installed P3D, the latest version 5.2, to make sure that it would work. Got it all configured. I had remembered and made notes of all of the settings in the graphic sound, everything from the previous build. So it's just a matter of going in and duplicating all of those settings. I put in PMDG. So we have Ryanair 186 ready to go as soon as everything is connected. Active Sky is installed as is FSUIPC. The other thing I put in was just a few, a half a dozen uh, airport sceneries. I'm going to be needing those sceneries for my flight between Bengaluru and Maldives. So that's my next flight that I have to do. So I needed the scenery in and I needed to make sure that everything was working. And it is. So what I have to do now is I need to put it all together, just screw in the, the retaining nuts. And now it's ready to go into the simulator room. And there isn't an awful lot of space in there. I'm going to show you what I mean. Well, here's the spare bedroom that is now a simulator room. I've got the cameras. Yeah, if you ever wonder where the cameras are placed, that's where they are. They're on the wall. And there's the upper one. And there's the simulator itself looking rather sorry and cold at the moment but it's back here that i have to deal with and i took away the monitor that was at the side here you know the right side screen to give myself some more space And there is all the space that I've got to work with. It's about 15 inches. And all those cables are going to have to be connected. <laughs> if I can remember how. Well, I have the computer all hooked up. All the USBs are in, I think. And I've connected the LAN for the network. And here you can see everything is pretty much plugged in all the USBs anyway. I've managed to get all of them in and I'm sure I'm missing something, but we'll find out, I'm sure. I have not plugged in all the video monitors yet. As you can see, those are still lying on the bottom. I only have one and that will be that one in the center.
that's just to get things started to make sure that everything is working and then one by one I'll put in all of the other monitors right time to fire it up well the computer is up and running and it is running very well indeed the first thing I had to do was to connect each of these monitor screens and there are seven of them and arrange them to match the instrument panel itself now when the computer first starts the monitors show up in a straight line until you rearrange them so here you can see how I rearrange them number one is this little screen right behind me this is the main window screen monitors six three and seven six three seven across the top here these are the three big screens of the upper panel then four and five those are the two CDUs while monitor number two is the lower display unit now here is the working instrument panel and here are all the monitors sitting behind the panel so you can see which are which now I did discover why the old motherboard wasn't working correctly on a motherboard there are chips that run the USBs and they're called USB hubs and on the old board some of them weren't working very well at all now USB hubs they have the task of regulating the voltage to a device that is connected and you can imagine of course what would happen if that voltage spiked <laughs> well on the old board it did and it caused issues when a program such as p3d is running it needs to connect to all of the hardware devices that are connected to the computer and it does so through cables like this and in my case of course the objects at the devices at the other end of the cables are all of these modules the radios the cdus the mcp the forward overhead all of it is all connected through usbs so if the motherboard has a usb problem and sends a voltage spike then the windows system closes the application quickly to avoid any permanent damage and that is what i was experiencing all of a sudden p3d would crash to the de desktop in the middle of a flight and not only that but some of the usb devices attached to the computer could also sustain damage and in my case the captain's yoke caught one of those spikes so when i connected all the USBs to the new motherboard and fired it up I discovered that I had an error showing up on the devices screen Do you see it here that unknown USB device with an invalid configuration descriptor and what is that USB device ha. this this is it tiny little thing isn't it this controls the switches on the yoke as well as the movement axis a voltage spike from the old motherboard wiped out the electronic descriptor which is on one of these chips and because the new motherboard doesn't recognize it it returns an error and doesn't want to talk to it <laughs> so that's the way that went so I had to remove the yoke, expose the card to see what I could do. And this is what I saw. The two white three pin plugs here control the two movements on the yoke, the elevator and the aerolons. The other wires are soldered directly onto the pins and they control the button functions. Now I was lucky to have 
a couple of spare controller cards and they and they are really small I mean look at this it's how small this is now for those of you who've handled these things in the past know full well that applying heat to a pin on a card such as this is subject to problems too much heat and you can destroy it too little heat and the joint won't hold so what to do well I resolved the problem by deciding to solder the wires to a small connector pin that could be inserted into a plastic holder that would then simply slide on top of the pins to make the connection and here is a close-up of the pin yes look how small it is on the tip of my finger <laughs> and I have to solder a dozen of these now for somebody with nimble fingers well that may not be a tough job but when you have arthritis well then it doesn't it's not so easy and it took me some time but I managed to get it done now here's a picture of the new controller card in place with all the wires soldered to the connector pins and secured into the plastic holders which are then slotted over the controller card pins to make the connection now to find out if this will work I have the computer switched on and the devices window open so here goes well here's the new one I'm just going to plug it in and and there it is it is showing up so that is working how about that so now I know it works and the firmware descriptor in this card is recognized by the system now looking at this screen you can see that I have two controllers here one here one there this one is the Leo Bodner card that has all sorts of switches and buttons attached to it as well as the steering tiller and the pedals the other is the new card for the captain's yoke all of the other devices are radio modules the forward overhead and the main instrument panel itself so what next well I have to configure the game controller cards and then in P3D I have to assign all the buttons all of these buttons and switches to values that correspond to functions that control the flight tedious yes but necessary I also have to align all the instrument panels and move them around so that they will fit into these gaps on these monitors here and I'll also have to install and calibrate the software that joins all of this hardware to PMDG so that when I flip a switch it does it on the aircraft and when I turn the yoke the airplane turns in the direction I'm expecting it to I'm also going to have to establish wide view and wide traffic so that the two computers flight one over there that's the new one and flight two here which controls the outside external screens can talk to each other and transmit information it is tedious and it is time consuming but it has to be done and when it is I'll have to make a short flight to make sure that there are no bugs you know when you think about it that's what happens when real aeroplanes uh, get fitted and get a new overhaul you have to make a test flight and if you can walk away from the landing then all is well and you can load the aircraft with champagne and caviar and invite some self-loading cargo to board the aircraft for a proper flight <laughs> and where will I be flying well 
Bengaluru VOBL to Mali VRMM in the Maldives. That was the flight I was trying to make when it crashed a few weeks ago. Well, and all being well, I hope it will be done by this time next week. So am I happy with the new motherboard? Oh yes, I most certainly am. It needed to be swapped out as things were not working well at all. The new motherboard can not only handle all the USBs that I currently have, but could handle a lot more besides should I wish to expand. Well, I'd better get cracking then with the tasks at hand. So you take care of yourselves and I'll see you on the tarmac with Ryanair 186 for a proper flight in just a few days. All right? Bye.